Hello, I'm Malcolm Donaldson. I'm one of the foundation governors at Stenning Primary School. And I'm also a member of Stenning Parish Church, the Church of St Andrew and St Cuthman. Before the coronavirus problem, I enjoyed helping to organise for outside speakers to visit the school on Thursdays and share collective worship with you. Until that becomes possible once again, we've agreed with your head teacher, Mrs Sue Harrison, that we'll send you a broadcast every week, beginning with the second half of this autumn term of 2020. The broadcast started last week with a short film about the parable of the vine made by the Reverend Nigel Hartley and featuring members of our church set in a vineyard. I hope you enjoyed this. From this week onwards until the end of term, we're asking someone from our church or another church to give you a short talk and to link this with a hymn or a carol or a song that we've recorded specially for you with our choir and our music group. We're very lucky at St Andrew and St Cuthman to have an excellent choir led by our organist, Mr Brian Sawyer, and a music group led by Dr Neil Ayton. And what's good about these broadcasts is that we can bring music to you from our church in a way that wouldn't be possible on a normal Thursday visit. So I'd like to hand you over to our vicar, Father Mark Heather, to give the first address. Good morning, children. It's morning here anyway. Is it afternoon or morning where you are? Anyway, good morning, good afternoon. Father Mark here, Vicar of Stenning. I hope you remember me. As we can't come into church, I'm coming to you on this broadcast uh, and you'll see some of the other visitors uh, that come to you uh, often on a Thursday assembly. I want to talk today about a song I learned when I was your age. I don't know if you know it. Um, uh, it's one that still goes round in my head sometimes. Um, and you can think about what it's about, if you're good at spelling. I am H-A-P-P-Y, I am H-A-P-P-Y. I know I am, I'm sure I am. I am H-A-P-P-Y. I don't know if I sung that when I went to Sunday school. My dad did because he told me he did. So it's quite an old song. If you're good at spelling, you can work out H A P P Y. Spell the theme of this half term for you. Happy, happiness. What does it mean to be happy? Well, happy on the outside is sometimes easy to tell. If someone is smiling, you can gather that they might be happy although they're not always happy. Uh, sometimes people smile with their mouths, but not with their eyes. What I'm interested in talking about today, though, is what happiness feels like on the inside. On the inside. Happiness comes from the inside, doesn't it? Not outside. And in Jesus's time, just like in our time, people would have spoken about their hearts, their, their feelings, they thought their feelings were inside their hearts, just as we might talk about, for example, someone being broken hearted. What does it mean to be broken hearted? It means something's happened to make your heart break with sadness. It's, it's a metaphor, it's a picture. Nothing to do with the heart that pumps the blood around our bodies, but we still use heart in that old fashioned sense that means something else. So Jesus's time in Jesus's language, Greek, they would have spoken about hearts in the same way that we do. They would have spoken too. They had another word for it, but of a mind where our thoughts are, where our reasoning is. Um, and if we are happy or if we are sad, we can think about why with our brains. That of course is where our minds do all the thinking. But there's another word which Jesus used and it's one that we don't use quite so much today, but you will hear it sometimes. And I don't know if you'll know it or not. It's the word soul. S-O-U-L. Soul. So for Jesus, people had a heart and a mind and a soul. The soul is the very inside of us. Originally, soul meant breathing. 
So for people of Jesus's time and before, if something was dead, it didn't breathe. If something was alive, the breath of life came into it. And they had a word that meant breath, that also meant the very inside of someone. And they believed this for hundreds and hundreds of years. Now, I began by singing a song about happiness. What I want you to do is just think for a moment about a song that makes you feel happy on the inside. I'll come back to that word soul in a minute. Think of a song that makes you feel happy on the inside. And if you've got a piece of paper, just write down the first line or the title of that song, or maybe it's a tune that you hum, that makes you feel happy inside. I'll just give you a moment to do that. If you didn't think of one then, maybe you can go away and think about it. A song that fills your insides with happiness. Now for Jesus, the songs, the only songs they had were Psalms that we still use in church today and you find in the Old Testament of the Bible. And the reason I told you about souls is that when the Psalms spoke about happiness, they spoke about someone's soul singing or someone's soul, someone's deep insides, longing and yearning for God. So that's what Jesus would have thought about when he thought about a soul. And he would have had his favourite psalms, just as we have our favourite songs. Hello everyone at Stenning Primary School. My name is Brian and I'm the organist and choir master of St Andrew's Church in Stenning. I expect quite a lot of you have visited this church from time to time and may have even heard our wonderful choir sing. Behind me there are a small group of that choir. We have to be fairly small today uh, because of the Covid but we've come together to sing some hymns and some carols that we sing during our services. This is a hymn that we often sing at weddings. It has a joyful sound which makes it very suitable for happy occasions like weddings when we praise God.
Well, I don't know if you like that tune or not. Um, the words, obviously, are quite complicated, but just focus on the tune. Did you hear it before? You might not have heard it before, but it's one that's quite catchy. So it might go round and round in your head uh, for some of the rest of the today. And if so, that's a good thing. One of the things I like to do uh, if I'm feeling a bit low is think of a tune that might take my mind off whatever it is that's making me feel low or angry or unhappy. So earlier on, when I asked you to think about a cheerful or happy tune, it might be that that's something you can do. Let that tune play inside your head at times when you need a tune to cheer you up. Our feelings inside us can be really confusing. Our hearts are sometimes broken. Our minds are sometimes quite confused. We're not always quite sure where our soul is, that God-shaped hole that longs and cries out to God. What prayer is actually, is a deep relationship with God from the inside of us, with the God who loves us, that fills our hearts with love because God is love. God is the love that fills all things, that made all things. At least that's what Christians believe. So here's a prayer for today. Loving Lord Jesus, thank you for all the things that make us happy. Thank you for being with me, especially when I feel sad. Pour your love into my heart, into my soul and into my mind. Help me to love you with all my strength and to love my neighbour as myself. Amen. <laughs>